All right, so we are back, and um, I'm definitely excited to get this project going for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get the other side of the axle all put together and lined up real nice so that we can get the truck basically off its jack stands. And then we're gonna go ahead and do some rear brakes, get those put on. I got some rear brakes from Rock Auto, so let's go ahead and get this started. Of course, we got the new leaf spring plate from Rock Auto. So that's awesome to have here now. Um, very huge shout out to Rock Auto and the things that they do, being it is making everything available so quickly. I'm telling you guys, the shipping on Rock Auto is outstanding. I ordered that and it came within like two, two days, three days. It was extremely quick. It was very, very freaking impressive, you guys, honestly. I am impressed with Rock Auto. If you don't use Rock Auto, check them out. This is not sponsored. This is just me saying, hey, I've given parts stores plenty, plenty of opportunities to get parts for me. And when they keep telling me oh, it's gonna be multiple weeks, it's gonna be this long, it's gonna be that long, I'm sick of it, I'm done with it. When I can get it from Rock Auto in a few days, that's what's up. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this on. We've got a dry ground to work on, so this is going to go a lot faster now. So, yay me. Um, let's get up underneath here. Oh, so beautiful. So much better to work with. All right, so one thing I didn't talk about here was um, with these U-bolts, you need to cut those down because they're not like a certain length. So you gotta cut these U-bolts down with an angle grinder and able to get your impact and your torque wrench on here to get these bad boys torque torque to 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 torque torque down um, and that torque spec is going to be about 174 foot pounds make sure you look that up it's also going to depend the torque spec is going to depend on the size of your u-bolts the thickness um, so it's going to be kind of more like a torquing specification of the actual bolt itself so these ones are 174 foot pounds That's just not fun stuff, not at all. But now we can go ahead and get those things tightened down and uh, get the axle put back on. Doesn't realize how nice it is outside right now. I'm outside right now. Hold on one second. I'm gonna put you down. Still there? Ugh. Get these lug nuts off the ground here. Um, I just totally realized that I wanted to put the brakes on, but I can't put the brakes on until we redo the e-brake system here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, follow up with you on the next video. I do want to take this tire off though and uh, uh, reposition my jack stands. We want to do that for a while. That's pretty nice. Sweet. All right, so we'll see you guys in the next video. Well, not the next video, just in a little bit. All right, everyone, we're back for yet again another day, a different day. We've had beautiful weather. We had weather of like 80 degrees, and then we went to snow, and now we're back to this gloomy kind of weather. We're here to finish up and do the rear parking brakes for the, the, the LBZ Duramax. I'm going to go ahead and reboot or redub this episode as more of, so I'm showing you the no bullshit of what everything that I happened that I ran into on this install, the couple days that it took me to get everything done and ordered properly. Um, so I'm gonna redub it to just like a straight install video as well. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, and let's go ahead and finish this damn project up. All right, so here you can see what I have. I have a couple screwdrivers, flat blade. I have my half inch impact with a 19 millimeter socket, remember that. Uh, two hammers, we've got some pliers, a long no need needle nose, a long angled, and as well as a hose grip. Don't really think I need the hose grip. Um, we have a pry bar and then some flow away right there and as well as a creeper. I do wanna say before you take this apart and take this out, you're gonna have some gear oil drop down. So you're gonna want a pan of some sort or a bucket to catch it. Please make sure you drain your diff or your rear axle here of all your gear oil before you do this. Otherwise you're gonna have it all drain out on this one side and it's gonna get really, 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 really messy. So first things first, we're gonna take our 19 millimeter. 
And then I also keep a box to put some stuff in here. I have two boxes, one for, one for the hub when I actually get it out itself, and then another one here for the small stuff. Oh man, looks like this was already taken into. You can see I'm pulling out some of the stuff here. That means the other, the old owner used some gasket maker, which explains why they leaked instead of the actual nice Felpro or Mall gasket that you're supposed to have. Oh, let's get this little tap. And there's some of the oil you can see here that's gonna drip out on us. I didn't grab a rag. Go ahead and pull this on out, set it aside. I'm gonna show you here, you can see here that it's just got some gasket maker and it's not even fully um, all the way around here, you can see. So this is not a good way to do it. I have the real gasket that you're supposed to use. I'll link the parts below in the video. I'm hoping you guys can see in here. Now we've got, let's see if I clean it up a little bit. That might help you a little bit more. We've got a snap ring in there. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. Pretty simple. Oh wow, I got lucky. I had magnetized this earlier. Take this out, wipe it down, put it in our bucket or a box. Now you can see here there's a key in here. That key needs to come out. Um, sometimes you have to say use a magnet. I like to simply just magnetize a screwdriver and just kind of go one way with this. And this will magnetize this screwdriver to where that key will come right out just like that. Um, and then if you want to unmagnetize your screwdriver, you just gotta hit it against, against the ground, against the ground, against the ground, against the ground a couple times, and uh, it no longer does it. So don't lose this key, don't lose that snap ring either. Next, this is key right here. So this has to come out, get a thicker one so I don't bend that screwdriver. This is the axle nut. This has to come out, this should come out really easily. This is a zero torque nut. So keep that in mind, come when we go to reinstall. And of course, it is tight. That happened last time. So we gotta go ahead and give it a couple taps. Couple tap, you tap, 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 tap. There we go. I don't really need my big uh, 32 ounce hammer. I could probably just get by with the old, oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Get, get by with the old 16 ounce. Oh, that's gorgeous. There we go, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and wipe this down as well. Um, I do have Flowway. A degreaser that I will be spraying on all these parts before I go and reinstall them. Um, I just want to do that just because I want to install them nice and clean. So now that we have all that off, the easy part comes now is we got to take the hub off. So we're going to take a pry bar, pry back behind here a little bit. Back on this side. Down here. There we go. Now it's broken loose. Oh, just like that. Let all that oil drain out. We're gonna set it in our pan right now. Okay, now at this point, um, you've got your bearing right here that we've gotta take off. I'm actually replacing these bearings. I'm not replacing the inner bearing. You can inspect your inner bearing right now, but I'm not replacing the inner bearing. I'm just replacing this outer bearing. Just because it's probably never been done. Um, it may have been done in the past, I don't know. They're pretty simple to take all this apart and replace them, so we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and replace that. All right, so the first thing you gotta do when you get this, we're gonna leave that seal in there right now. We do have to get the, ooh, ooh, no way. Is that gonna come off that easy? I mean, if it's gonna come off that easy for you guys, you can go ahead and take it off right now. Nah, we'll wait. Okay, so here's the fun part. Now we need to take these clips out these clips hold your brake pad, your brake shoes in. You can see why I use multiple different pliers here. 
Thank you to the Wisconsin Rust. Just gotta turn it, and once you turn it, boom, perfect. Now I'm getting all new parts for these, so I don't necessarily have to keep these. Um, I would highly suggest if you live in a very salty climate, you replace these parts. As you can see here, hopefully in the video, that this is really, really nasty. So we're actually replacing all these little parts. Um, and again, I'll link these below for you guys as well. Yuck. Here you go. You can see here that it's kind of got like a, a head on it. And you just gotta turn that head. Next, we've gotta go ahead and try and take the spring out. Again, I'm not reusing this spring, so I'm not gonna be too careful with it. Um, if you were reusing it, you could try and be careful with it. Um, again, I'm not reusing it, so I'm not gonna be. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and take our hammer. This way. And there we have it. Our old pads are off. This is your adjuster right here. Um, and you're gonna wanna go ahead and keep this old adjuster. So that way you can size up the new adjuster to the right size and just match this one exactly. Now you've got this old axle seal here. We're gonna go ahead and take this bad boy off. Highly recommend replacing this. Yuck. Spray down with some flow away or some brake cleaner, whatever you want to use. Get that all nice and new. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now the one thing we are reusing out of this whole setup is the actuator itself. Um, and you can see this is frozen up on us. So we're gonna go ahead and get this soaking in some croil. And after this soaks in some croil, we're gonna go ahead and reuse this one. Um, I did not order a new one. You can if you want to. I just didn't think I had to. And even in the north here, I can break this free and reuse it. So we're gonna go ahead and reuse it. All right, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and get this soaking in some croil. I'm honestly gonna let this soak for a solid hour, you guys. Um, I'll let it sit there, soak for an hour. I'll start actuating it a little bit, um, and then we'll go ahead and clean it off real nicely, and it'll be ready to go. It works really good. Honestly, it works really, really well. So that being said, I'll see you in a little bit here. Um, we're gonna continue with this video, and I'll show you how well this did work. All right, so I let it soak for about an hour. That is solid. Let's see if we can move it. Let's see if we can move it. Oh yeah, easy. Easy peasy. A little stiff, um, but it'll, it'll loosen up more. Obviously that was seized up before, so um, that's, that's plenty good, and it's actually, I can see it's working more gunk out the more I actuate this. So yeah, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and start installing. Grab our parts. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the blue spring. Kind of finagle this thing on in here. Just like that. Now this is gonna go underneath. Get your actuator back in. Now with it hanging here, you're gonna go ahead and take your pin, put your pin through the back. Take your clip, put your clip on. And give it a turn. You got one shoe on. Now that you've got this shoe on, go ahead and take your other pin, put it through. <laughs> I made that first one look really easy. Wow. Ugh, wrong way. And give it a turn. There we go. All right, there, uh, hard part's over. All right, so now, there we go. 
I had to slide. If you, if you saw there, hopefully you saw, hopefully I can zoom in for you. What I was doing there is the shoe wasn't sitting in the right position. Um, if you see here, this is how your shoes are supposed to sit. So now when I pull this actuator, it pulls that shoe out. So, so now the next step is we're gonna go ahead and get our adjuster bolt put together here. It's this fancy star bolt. Go ahead and put that all the way on. Now if you see here, it's almost got like a really flat part that goes into it. That's gonna sit in the brake shoe as well on this side. But before we do anything, we're gonna go ahead and get our white lithium grease. We're gonna go ahead and get this on these threads here. Now again, this is to prevent um, basically your, this is going to help when you need to adjust your brake pads, your shoes and stuff, this is going to help that from seizing and stuff like that when you are dealing with the rust belt like we are here. So I ran it down and I ran it back up. I'm gonna wipe the excess off with our rig. We're gonna go ahead and put this on. Now this is where I said you needed to keep this. We're gonna go ahead and match these up. Um, you can kind of just set them on a nice flat surface is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna set them on the leaf spring here. Can you see? I don't think you guys can see. But anyways, you're gonna go ahead then and just adjust the nut until both of these line up equally. And then once they line up equally, you can go ahead and get these in. You can do this vice versa. You can either put the spring in first and then try and spread it apart and put this in. I personally like to put this in first. Just like that, it's just easier for me. Um, so next is the spring. You go ahead and put this in. Then you're gonna go ahead and just spread it just like that. There you go. You have successfully gone ahead and put your rear drum pads back together for your e-brakes. Again, you can test it by just go ahead and pulling the actuator. You can see oh, it pulls on it very nicely. So now we're going to go ahead and clean this off here. Again, I'm spraying it down with some flow way. Flip it over. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our new bearing in. This is gonna sit quite simple, just like this. I don't know if you can see that right in there. Now we have our new seal. Now this seal is going to sit like this. It's gonna go ahead and go in here. Now they do have a special tool you can install this with. I'm just going with a piece of wood. Ooh, an old piece of wood too. Very nice, very nice. Now before I install anything, I'm gonna go ahead and give this another spray down and another wipe down with our Flowway. Again, non this is a non-sponsored video, it's just what I use. You can use brake cleaner, stuff like that. I found that this Flowway works really, really well and a lot better than my brake cleaner ever has. And it lasts a lot longer as well, so. Oh, we're gonna go ahead and get this on. Now comes the fun part. Now we gotta slam this on here. I'm gonna use this block of wood until it breaks and I'm gonna use my other one. Let me guess your next question is gonna be, how did you know uh, when to stop? You'll feel it. If I was to be honest, you'll feel it. Again, if you haven't noticed, I'm using a lot of degreaser and stuff. Why am I using a lot of degreaser? It's because I don't want anything to get in here, okay? I don't want anything to get in here. I want to stay nice and clean. I want to be absolutely as clean as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our axle nut. Yes, I'm going to spray it down as well. Again, remember when I talked about when I first installed this axle nut? I talked about how this was a zero torque nut. That's going to come into play in here again once we get this on, you'll see. Now again, they do make a special tool for this. I'm not using it. Um, it's not 100% necessary. If you want to, you can use it. Pretty sure it's in the, pretty much every tool program uh, that your local parts hardware store has. If I remember correctly, it's like 15 bucks, maybe even less. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tight. 
go with a different screwdriver. Even my screwdrivers, I'm wiping down because I'm before I'm sticking it in there. Okay, now we're nice and tight. Now, if you can see here, if you see here, we're not lined up. We've got to line that up. Now, again, this is a zero torque, so you got to keep that in mind. So when you go ahead and line this up, you don't want it to be super tight. It's zero torque. Once you line this up, you can take your pin again, and you put that in there, just like that. Now you've got your snap ring, or your ring, and voila, just like that. Now if you can see on the axle shaft here, you can see all this gunk. We're gonna go ahead and get that off. I'm just gonna simply take a screwdriver and it'll come right off. That is why you don't wanna use this kind of gasket on here, because it just doesn't last. And uh, your rear axle is gonna be leaking, and you'll be shooting yourself in the foot. Look at that. I mean, it just comes, just comes off just like that. Now, of course, we're gonna go ahead and wipe it down. Here is the gasket you need to be using. It is a metal fell probe gasket. I do believe Maul makes one too. Um, highly suggest using this. Fits right over like this. I'll link all the stuff below for you guys. Slide it on, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and set this in for right now. And I'm gonna finish cleaning the end of this. There's a lot of this gasket maker on it. Now we're gonna go ahead and try and find our hole. Ah, be patient with it. Be very patient with it. Now, before you go ahead and reinstall these, make sure you clean all this gunk off of here. That's why I have a wire brush. I don't have a bench grinder, unfortunately, like Eric. Do that to every single one. 19 millimeter. Go in a star, go in a star pattern, just like you do with lug nuts. and we're in business. Now the torque spec on these bolts is gonna be 115 foot pounds. You can replace these bolts if you want to, but it's not really a necessity. What's really crucial is that you torque them down to 115 foot pounds. After that, you've got this fully back and assembled. You can go ahead and add new gear oil in. And then um, I do believe I run a 7590. Um, Amsoil is what I use, so. I'm not going to show you how to do the rear parking brake cable. Um, I'm going to be doing a all brand new rear parking brake cables on this truck. I do have them already. So if I did that video, I'll link it below for you guys. Um, that video is coming here shortly in the future. That's why I'm not going to go ahead and show you that right now because I'm putting new ones on anyway. So it's not really a purpose for me to do that. It's really easy to do, so go ahead and look up some other videos if it's not there already. So like I said, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching this. If you found this helpful, please let that let me know in the comments. I do appreciate that a lot. If you have any tips or tricks to add to, add to this process, most definitely add that below as well as all comments are basically welcome in my channel, um, except for negativity. I'm not a big fan of it, but we put up with it because it's just kind of something we do. So that being said, have a great night. Oh, and I will add, obviously I don't have my rear brake pads, rotors, um, dr uh, pads, rotors, calipers on. So I'll link a video below on say the paperweight. I think we did the rear brakes on the paperweight. I'll link that below for you guys so you can know how to take that apart um, to get to the point to where we were in the beginning of this video and then go ahead and take the rest of this apart, put it back together, yada, yada, yada. So just wanna add that little bit for you guys. Like I said, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for all the support and um, have yourselves a great night, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this video. Appreciate it.